A sentiment that you hear a lot is that modern music is crap. Compare any modern pop song to a classic track by Queen, The Beatles, Fleetwood Mac, Elton John, and there will be no contest. And of course, if you compare the widely accepted greatest songs of all time with whatever happens to be in the charts this week, then the classics are always going to come out on top. But the thing is, we look back on history with rose-tinted glasses. When you look at a 70s playlist on Spotify, you may think, my god, these songs are all amazing. But that's not because every song released in the 1970s was a classic. It's because all of the forgettable songs have been forgotten about. All of the crap doesn't get played anymore, it doesn't get played on the radio, it doesn't get talked about, so it disappears and all we are left with is the classics which can quite literally stand the test of time. If we randomly look at number one songs from the 70s, we will find some classics, yes. Starry, starry night. But we will also find some crap. Now, perhaps you have a nostalgic connection with some of these songs, and that's fair enough. But I'm happy to say that these songs are just as uninspired and just as uninteresting as some of the songs that get branded as crap today. Then and now, there is crap pop music. But also then and now, there is creative, rich, original music being made. The only difference between the music now and the music in the 1970s is that the modern music hasn't had a chance yet to earn its classic status. It hasn't been put on a pedestal yet and the crap that surrounds it hasn't had a chance to fade away into history. So today I want to show you eight artists, eight albums that were released in the last 18 months that I think could qualify to be future classic albums. The first album we're going to look at was released in June 2020, was nominated for four Grammys and got to number six in the UK album charts. It's Punisher by Phoebe Bridges. From the serenely atmospheric opener, Garden Song Someday I'm gonna live. To the emotional energy of Kyoto And ending with the almost scary climax of I Know The End This album is full of beautifully tender songs and don't just take my word for it, because one of Phoebe Bridges' most vocal fans is actually Elton John. All you need to hear to know that Punisher is a good album is this clip of Elton interviewing Phoebe Bridges on his radio show, Rocket Hour. Your album, as I say, is like an old friend. You know, I have records in my life that are reference points. And I think Punisher is one of those reference points. I can't pay you a bigger compliment than that. And I want to congratulate you for that and say thank you for the music. Thank you for making this brilliant record. Good luck at the Grammys. If you don't win at least one, I'm going to hit someone, okay? <laughs> I would pay to see that. I'm going to hit someone, definitely. The next album we're going to look at is called Jesse Volume 3. It was nominated for three Grammys, winning one of them. And the artist is widely considered to be the internet's biggest music theory nerd. It's Jacob Collier. Jacob Collier is often presented as the poster boy of music theory, which I think leads some people to think that his music will be technical for technical sake, all theory and no feeling. But although it is true that Jacob put some pretty technical musical concepts to use in his music, his music is also deeply organic and compelling. It may use some microtonality and polyrhythms, but you don't need a music theory degree to know that this album has some absolute bangers on it. My favourite track on the album is probably In My Bones, which almost feels like something Peter Gabriel would write. Be my crush, be my crush, be my and all I need is exactly what you would expect when a music theory nerd like Jacob Collier writes a pop song. For example, this song doesn't just modulate for the last chorus, it modulates to a microtonal key centre. The next album on the list is a pretty big swing away from Jacob Collier. It's Sour by Olivia Rodrigo. When it was released earlier this year, this album went straight to number one across the world, and its lead single, Driver's License, is almost undoubtedly the biggest song of the year. Stop, and yes, I know what you're thinking, Olivia Rodrigo, 18-year-old Disney actor turned pop star, 
Am I really saying that her debut album Sour is a classic album in the making? Well, perhaps I wouldn't go as far as that, but this is certainly more than just an average pop album and is definitely worth a listen. Sour is certainly the most pop of any of the albums on this list, but this album has taken typical pop music and blended it with two dozen other elements, creating a really interesting original listen. Sour opens with the garage rock inspired Brutal. Brutal out of here. Track 6, Good For You, gives us a chorus that wouldn't sound out of place on a Paramore album. And my personal favourite, Jealousy Jealousy, even gives us some tangy, dissonant, chromatic piano playing. It may have been created by a teenage Disney pop star, but this album genuinely has some really fresh sounding, interesting songs on it. The next album on the list is called Fetch the Bolt Cutters. It won two Grammys and it's by Fiona Apple. Now, unlike most of the artists on this list, Fiona Apple has actually been on the scene for quite a while. For perspective, her breakthrough single Criminal was released six years before Olivia Rodrigo was even born. But despite already being a well-established artist, Fiona Apple's latest album isn't some safe, predictable addition to her back catalogue. You only have to listen to the album's lead single, Shamika, to get a sense of this album's personality. Riving hypnotic piano, intense hammer-like percussion, and a captivating vocal performance. This album also has some brilliantly insightful lyric writing, with some lyrical themes that are made even more poignant by the fact that the album was released in the middle of a pandemic. The next album on the list got to number two on the UK album charts and certainly channels some Ziggy Stardust energy. It's Zeros by Declan McKenna. I remember last year I was sat in my garden during the first lockdown and um, I saw on Spotify that the first four tracks of this album had just been released as an EP. They sort of staggered the release of this album. And um, I put it on and by the time I stood up again I'd already listened to it all the way through three times. I was just absolutely hooked on this music. My favourite track is Be An Astronaut which just overflows with glam rock energy. And the same rocky, visceral energy continues in Daniel, You're Still a Child. The next album on the list, at times, sounds like it's actually from the 1970s, but it definitely came out in the 2020s. It's Thundercat with It Is What It Is. Thundercat is one of the main artists who is taking jazz, funk and soul into the modern day. This album not only won the 2021 Grammy for Best Progressive R&B Album, but more importantly, it quotes The Lick. So you know it's an authentic jazz album. My favourite track is Dragon Ball Durag, which sounds like if the Isley Brothers had a time machine. But at the other end of the spectrum, we have Fair Chance, which is a very modern sounding R&B track, but done with brilliant attention to detail and style. So far, all of the albums on this list have been either by Americans or by Brits, but the next album is actually by an Aussie. It's Tame Impala with The Slow Rush. Kevin Parker, who is the man behind Tame Impala, has already established himself as one of the most interesting musicians working today with his three previous releases. But the slow rush continues that run with another collection of creative, original songs, which fuse elements of rock, electronic, and hip hop music. My favorite track on slow rush is Borderline. But I also love the energetic shuffle of Lost in Yesterday. Now, although The Slow Rush is a great album, it's not actually my favourite Tame Impala album. But that's the thing, when you're an artist like Tame Impala and you've already created two amazing albums in Lonerism and Currents, they're a pretty hard act to follow, but Tame Impala has risen to the challenge again and created an amazing album. 
Now, the last album that we're going to look at today is certainly the least mainstream, but this is an album that I've absolutely fallen in love with over the last few weeks. It's by a Norwegian four-piece called Pompoko, and the album is called Cheetah. This album is full of raw energy and some pretty wacky but captivating music. You've got the joyfully janky track Andrew. The energetic like a lady where I swear her vocal doesn't even sound like a voice when it first enters here. Have a listen to what I mean. And a whole bunch of other songs which each have their own personality and really interesting ideas within them. So I really hope Pompoko go on and become more mainstream because they really do deserve it. So that was eight albums from the last 18 months, which I think really do prove that not all modern music is crap. And of course, there's plenty more music I could have talked about. For some really quick fire honourable mentions, we've got British rock band Wolf Alice with their new album Blue Weekend. Cory Wong's Fearless Flyers released a superbly funky album in 2020 called Tailwinds. Heim released their third album, Women and Music Part 3, which hit number one in the UK and was nominated for two Grammys. And a personal favourite of mine right now is singer-songwriter Soccer Mummy, who's released her second album, Colour Theory. So that's my favourite music of the last year and a half. But as I said, I know there is plenty more music out there which I haven't mentioned or that I just haven't heard. So if you can think of some great music that has come out in the last year and a half, do put it in the comments down below because I'd love to listen to as much as I can. And as always, a massive, massive thanks goes to everyone who supports me on Patreon, including the names you see on screen right now, and Andre Sainz Diaja, Andy Deacon, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andrew Sussman, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Whitney Parker, Cameron Orvilla, Colin Aiken, Chris Cabal, Christopher Ryan, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Elena Skorchenko, Eugene Leroy, F.D. Hodor, Greg Kabowski, Ilna Mola Toner, Hamish Brocklebank, Hernick Kutcher, Hugo Miller, Ivan Pang, Jake Fisher, James Keo, J.A. Kokensbarger, John Dye, Josh Sanderlin, Justin Vigger, Lee Lauridson, Mark Siegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Melanie Shona, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Paul Middleton, Paul Muller, Paul Paisel, Peter Dunphy, Richard Bride, Roger Clay, John Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Homer Aharoni, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Victor Levy, Bidad Flowers, Vladimir Kodakov, Volti, and Waylon Fairbanks. 